George Westinghouse showed faith in his enterprises by investing his own money in them. Many of his new businesses were financed at the beginning by borrowing from his seasoned companies, which had already become successful, like Westinghouse Airbrake. Several times, he imperiled his entire fortune and his credit by investing practically everything into his startup companies when others lacked faith. This meant he had more at risk, but the payout was higher if they succeeded. The risks of this method of finance culminated in the disaster of 1907, which came to be the tragedy of his life. The Westinghouse Enterprises had spread all over the world, and their requirements for working capital were immense. And when the widespread money crisis of 1907 arrived, his loans were called. Because he was fascinated in new projects, he, had, he, he borrowed a lot of money at the time, which he was not his usual style. Like I say, he, he was sort of anti-banking, not sort of, he was. He didn't like to borrow money. He, he liked to generate uh, investment out of his own uh, profits. He had a, a, a dislike for bankers, and, and that would hurt him in the long run. But in the case of a lot of electrical projects, like the Niagara Falls generating plant at the time, he was overextended in his electrical company, no question about it. J.P. Morgan up in New York had wanted to bring Westinghouse into an electrical trust with, at the time, General Electric. Westinghouse disliked trust and, and, and refused, and uh, that put him at odds with Morgan. The bankers were very tough individuals. They had taken uh, Edison Electric Company away from Thomas Edison in 1888. He was not happy about that, by the way. There was a downturn in the economy, a depression, if you would, here in this country. George Westinghouse had just invested a huge amount of money in building the East Pittsburgh Works of Westinghouse Electric Company. He had a, quite a number of outstanding loans. Loans were callable in those days. And if he were here today, he'd tell you he'd, he'd believe the bankers used that as a reason to force him out of control of the Westinghouse Electric Company, which they did. Newspapers, the Pittsburgh newspapers in particular, blamed it on Westinghouse, his poor management. So on top of everything else, he's getting headlines that he's a poor manager. Now Morgan didn't take over Westinghouse. There were other bankers. So it was really a crushing blow to him. It was written that this was the most considerable mercantile failure that America has ever witnessed. Control of the Westinghouse Electric Company passed out of his hands. Ironically, his name remained as their greatest asset. The writer of his biography said that as he was riding with him one night, when passing the great works at East Pittsburgh, George turned his face towards the bleak hills on the other side of the way with an expression so pathetic as to break one's heart.